Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. We've just released RapidPlan version 3.0, whose main new feature is the ability to integrate base maps into your plans. Uh, we have a separate tutorial covering base maps, so in this video we'll quickly go over some of the other improvements that will make your life easier in RapidPlan 3.0. Uh, we'll start with creating new plans, which is now streamlined through the new plan wizard. Uh, the wizard lets you create plans based on existing templates, PDF files, uh, using base maps as background, or just a plain blank drawing canvas. Uh, again, all the different options here will be covered in a separate tutorial, so I'll just stick to a blank canvas to go to the next step uh, where you set the properties of your new plan. Uh, the main thing I want to note here is that if you scroll down to the bottom, you can specify the location of the plan works. Um, you first search for the area or city, uh, then you can zoom in and out uh, and drag the map so that the little red cross in the middle points uh, to your specific location. Uh, you can see the location coordinates at the bottom here. Uh, we strongly recommend that you do take the time to specify plan location. Uh, if you want to use the integrated base maps, this is actually required, but even if you don't, Saving plan location will later allow you to use our online tools to search for plans within a specific area. Other than the location, you can also specify when the works are meant to start, uh, finish, some basic plan information, plan scale, and finally, you can also pick the size of the print region. And this replaces the plan size selection we had in all the rapid plan versions. I'll talk a bit more about this in a second. Uh, for now, let's just stick to A4 portrait and we can hit create plan. Now that we have a plan open, I can show you why we had to pick a print region size. In Rapid Plan 3.0, the drawing canvas is always unrestricted. This gives you a lot of freedom uh, when drawing plan objects, but at the end of the day, uh, you will be printing or exporting to a specific page size, so the print region is basically your guide to where your drawing needs to fit. Having said that, you can also add multiple print regions, um, which is very convenient if you're printing large TCPs by section. You can either pick a predefined region size from the list, or you can draw your own custom print area. Uh, only one region can be active at a time, and you can toggle between them by double-clicking the printer icon. Unlike in all the rapid plan versions, the drawing canvas is essentially infinite. You can scroll in either direction, and when you hit the edge, the canvas will expand automatically. If you ever get lost while scrolling, you don't know where your plan objects are. You can use this uh, scroll to origin button, which will take you back to the red cross indicating the plan center point. While we're zooming and scrolling, uh, note that we've increased the zoom range up to 3000%, uh, which lets you edit your objects at a very fine level of detail. The zoom slider is now based on the logarithmic scale, which makes it adjust the viewport smoothly, both at small and large zoom levels. We have also redesigned the diagram rulers. Uh, they uh, show you the distance from plan center point, given the plan scale you specify. If you prefer to see page units or pixels instead, the units are adjustable in rapid plan preferences. If you don't need the rulers and want more drawing space instead, you can hide them by clicking the little rectangle in the corner. And the same thing with the toolbar. Okay, uh, before I move on to more new features, a few quick productivity tips. Uh, the escape key has become an application-wide hotkey which lets you escape from whatever you're currently doing. If you're drawing an object, it will finish or cancel the drawing, just like the right mouse click. If you have objects selected, uh, escape will clear the selection. If you're in any dialogue, uh, the escape key will close it. Now, when you're drawing objects, uh, normally uh, when you right click, it will finish the current object and then move on to draw another one. A lot of times you only want to draw one object and then select it. So instead of doing right click, uh, then another right click and then left to select, you can now just uh, double click um, the left mouse button. And this does what you want in one step. Um, and the last tip, when you're dragging a selection box, 
uh, normally it will select all objects that fully fit within the box. So if I do this, only the bottom object gets selected. But if you hold the shift key while you're dragging and you do this, then it will select all objects that um, overlap the bounding box even, even partially. So it will select both objects. Okay, let's move on to editing text objects. Rapid Plan 3.0 lets you edit text in place on your drawing canvas. When you're creating a new text object, you first specify its position and then you can start typing. Existing text objects uh, are fully editable. You just need to double click on them to activate the editor. The in-place editing uh, works the same whether the text object was moved or rotated in any way. Of course, if you prefer to, you can still uh, edit text the normal way via the properties panel. The in-place editing works for all objects containing editable text, uh, for example, the callout box. If an object contains more than one uh, text field, uh, like this VMS board, you just double click uh, the one that you actually want to edit. So if I create three panels here, I can edit the middle panel or the bottom panel, whichever one I like, and I just need to click on the one I want to edit. Uh, the on plan text editing feature is also used by distance markers. If you're familiar with all the rapid plan versions, uh, you'll remember that for each distance marker, we had a corresponding order distance marker, uh, which displayed the actual distance drawn based on the plan scale. Uh, so in 3.0, um, the distance marker does this by default. It displays the distance drawn based on plan scale. Um, however, if I want to specify my own text instead, uh, I just need to double click on it and uh, start typing. What this does in the background um, is it changes the marker mode property uh, of, of the object. So if I want to um, uh, go back to the default, I can do this and it will display the distance again or my custom text if I want to. Now, while we're discussing distance markers, um, we have a new combined offset distance marker tool, which is very handy when you're measuring uh, sections of a road. It works like this. And again, uh, this, this is editable and I can enter my uh, custom text in here. Looking at the properties panel, uh, you'll notice it got redesigned in Rapid Plan 3.0. The idea behind it is the same. When nothing is selected, it displays the properties of the plan. And when I select something, I get the properties of uh, my selected object. One major change with it is that some properties are presented together within a single editor. So for example, uh, if I set the number of lanes on this road to four, I have a single editor I can use to edit all its lane markers. Say I want to change the middle marker um, I click on it, it expands a panel for editing the different properties of this specific marker. Let's make it double. Uh, then click the marker again to collapse the editor. While we're on lane markers, Rapid Plan 3.0 makes it easier and more accurate to adjust marker dashes. When you click more in the lane marker editor, you can specify dash lengths and gaps. A lot of times, um, when your plan is drawn to scale, you'll want to do this in distance units so that the markers match your local regulations exactly. Uh, you can select the distance units at the bottom of the properties panel, uh, and then all the properties marked with the scale icon will be using the selected units. So if I set my dashes uh, to three meters and gaps to nine meters, 
a common standard in, in parts of Australia, I get the marker adjusted accordingly and I can use um, a distance marker to verify this. I'll use an offset distance marker and I can confirm I have a new lane marking dash drawn every 12 meters. Now, the reason we started grouping uh, properties uh, in, in the properties panel uh, was to avoid the properties list from getting too long as we add more and more options to our objects. Um, the list for the road is, is already fairly long, so uh, some people might prefer to use the quick edit panel instead. When I have an object selected, I can double click on it or hit the enter key on my keyboard to open the dialog. Uh, so again, compared to previous versions of, of Rapid Plan, the dialog has been redesigned. It now allows you to edit all the options that the properties panel has. However, it's more readable as it only displays one category at a time. Uh, say I want to get rid of the sidewalks on this road. Uh, I'd first open the left side category, uh, then change sidewalk width to zero, and then I do the same thing for the right side. and now my sidewalks are gone. Uh, when I hit save, the changes are applied to my original object. One last feature I'm going to discuss is one that a lot of our customers have requested. So if you've made it this far through this tutorial, we'll end with something you'll definitely like. You can now copy styles between objects on your plan. Let me show you how this works. I'll draw a couple of rectangles and edit the properties of one of them. Uh, let's give it a red outline and a dotted hatch fill. I'll copy the edited object uh, through the context menu. And now I can obviously uh, paste it onto the diagram. But I can also select the other rectangle and do paste style which applies the style of the object I copied. The faster way of doing this is with uh, keyboard shortcuts. So Control C is the default for copy. Then to paste instead of Control V, I do Control plus Shift plus V. Now I can also select multiple rectangles and have the style applied to all of them in one go. So Control plus Shift plus V again, and the style gets applied to all of them. Uh, in fact, they don't even have to be rectangles. Uh, styles can be copied between objects of different types, um, and as long as they share some of the properties, uh, the properties that they share uh, will be copied. So let me show you a field line and a line. So if I paste the rectangle style over these objects, uh, the style gets applied. And in case of the spline, the field spline, uh, obviously it's copied both the, the stroke and the fill. In case of the line, it's the stroke only. Um, obviously, I've used the simple primitive objects here, but the feature uh, works for all rapid plan objects. Uh, for example, uh, let me draw a roundabout. And then I'll copy my custom road, uh, and then I'll paste its style onto the roundabout. And as you can see, the, the sidewalks that the road had removed were also removed from the roundabout. So now they sort of match perfectly. Uh, finally, I can also use an existing object style to draw a new object. Uh, right click on the road and select duplicate style. And now I'm drawing a new road, which uses the same properties as my original. Uh, since this is similar to duplicating objects with the control D shortcut, uh, the duplicate style shortcut is control plus shift plus D.
Thanks for watching this tutorial. We went through some of the new features in Rapid Plan 3.0, but certainly not all of them. You can check out the full list of changes on our website. The easiest way to access the list is to go to Rapid's welcome screen, uh, then click the details and tutorials box here. I definitely recommend watching the other tutorial we have uh, covering the integrated base maps, which is the biggest and most awesome change in this version of Rapid Plan. Uh, for more info, please visit our invariant.com website. And as always, we appreciate any of your comments or suggestions, or in case you need any assistance, feel free to email us at support at invariant.com. Thanks again. Bye-bye.